Not to be confused with Thomas the Rhymer, a 13th century Scots laird. Thomas Rhymer held the office of English historiographer royal. Rhymer's most lasting contribution was his compilation and publication of 16 volumes of texts of agreements made between the Crown of England and foreign powers during all earlier centuries. Early Life and Education Thomas Rymer was born at Appleton Wisk, near Northallerton in the North Riding of Yorkshire in 1643, or possibly at Japheth. He was the younger son of Ralph Rymer, Lord of the Manor of Brafferton in Yorkshire, described by Clarendon as possessed of a good estate. The father was executed for his part in the Farnley Wood plot of 1663. The son studied at Northallerton Grammar School where he was a classmate of George Hicks. Here he studied for eight years under Thomas Smelt, a noted royalist. Aged 16, he then went to study at Sydney Sussex College, Cambridge, entering on 29 April 1659. Although Rymer was still at Cambridge in 1662, when he contributed Latin verses to a university volume celebrating the marriage of Charles II and Catherine of Braganza, there is no record of his taking a degree. This may have been due to the financial problems his father was suffering at the time, or the fact that on 13 October 1663 his father was arrested and executed the following year for his involvement in the Farnley Wood plot to stage an uprising in Yorkshire against King Charles II. Although Thomas's elder brother Ralph was also arrested and imprisoned, Thomas himself was not implicated, and on 2 May 1666, he became a member of Gray's Inn, and was called to the bar on 16 June 1673. Career. His first appearance in print was as translator of René Rapin's Reflections on Aristotle's Treatise of Poesy, to which he added a preface in defense of the classical rules for unity in drama. Following the principles there set forth, he composed a tragedy in verse, licensed 13 September 1677, called Edgar, or the English Monarch, which was a failure. It was printed in 1678. Rymer's views on the drama were again given to the world in the shape of a printed letter to Fleetwood Shepherd, the friend of Prior, under the title of The Tragedies of the Last Age Considered, to Ovid's epistles translated by several hands, with preface by Dryden, Penelope to Ulysses was contributed by Rymer, who was also one of the hands who English the Plutarch of 1683-86. The life of Nishes fell to his share. He furnished a preface to Whitelock's Memorials of English Affairs, and wrote in 1681 a general draft and prospect of the Government of Europe, reprinted in 1689 and 1714 as of the antiquity, power, and decay of parliaments, where, ignorant of his future dignity, the critic had the misfortune to observe, you are not to expect truth from an historiographer royal, he contributed three pieces to the collection of poems to the memory of Edmund Waller, afterwards reprinted in Dryden's Miscellany Poems, and is said to have written the Latin inscription on Waller's monument in Beaconsfield Churchyard. The preface to the posthumous Historia Ecclesiastica of Thomas Hobbes is said to have been by Rymer but the life of Hobbes sometimes ascribed to him was written by Richard Blackburn. He produced a congratulatory poem upon the arrival of Queen Mary in 1689. His next piece of authorship was to translate the sixth elegy of the third book of Ovid's Tristia for Dryden's Miscellany Poems. On the death of Thomas Shadwell in 1692 Rymer received the appointment of historiographer royal at a yearly salary of £200. Immediately afterwards appeared his much-to-discussed short view of tragedy, criticizing Shakespeare and Ben Jonson, which produced the impartial critic of John Dennis, the epigram of Dryden. Rymer's most lasting contribution to scholarship was the 16 volumes of Fodera he published from 1704 to 1713, a collection of all the leagues treaties, alliances, capitulations, and confederacies, which have at any time been made between the Crown of England and any other kingdoms. 
princes and states, it was an immense labor of research and transcription on which he spent the last 20 years of his life. Rima died on 13 December 1713, and was buried four days later in St. Clement Danes Church in the Strand. He apparently left no immediate family.